create an exceptional learning experience from our, for our students, irrespective of the method of instruction. We have no interest in becoming or providing an education that would be best, that could be described as prep light. We've invested in technology to ensure continuous access to learning and to provide as much continuity, cohesion, and support as we can throughout the year. We prioritize flexibility, keeping the many different needs of our students and families in mind throughout the year. And finally, our third goal is that we will provide you with clear and consistent communication throughout the year. That's really important, perhaps more important than ever this year. We know that pandemic conditions will change. We know that guidance will change and we will adapt our plans and our approach with those changes and we're gonna tell you about it. So those are our three basic objectives. But we know too that no plan works on its own. And so we encourage you parents to talk with your students about your expectations of them while they're in school and at school, and about the importance of taking the school's health and safety protocols seriously. Things like washing hands, using hand sanitizer, wearing a mask, being appropriately physically distant during school. All of those things are gonna to matter to us throughout the year, and it'll take an entire village to educate our students and to make sure that that happens well. While it's clearly not a normal year, still I think the beginning of a new school year is always a hopeful time. I love the beginning of school years. And I think that this issue of hope is more important now than ever. The hope and the faith that there's light beyond the challenge is a powerful gift for us. And it's in that spirit, and it is that spirit, that we will use to guide us throughout this year. We fielded many questions over the course of the last three weeks about how the school day will work. And I'd like to turn it over now to Christine to take you through a day in the life at PrEP. We will provide ample time for you to ask questions at the end. You can write your questions in the box at the bottom of your screen. Um, we'll compile them and we will answer them um, as we, as at the end of, of Christine's remarks. So Christine, you're on. Well, thank you. Um, as John mentioned, I will walk through um, what we expect to be a day in the life of a prep student. And before I even get started, I'm so happy to see, I know we have some prep students joining us tonight, so I'm really happy to see you here and I'm excited to welcome you back. Things will look different here at the prep school from the very start of the day. Um, by now, you have received information about busing for the upcoming year. As you probably know, the St. Cloud School District sets the rules for our busing here at prep. As of right now, they will transport our prep students two days a week and only on days when St. Cloud is in session, um, St. Cloud schools are in session. So please know that this plan could change at any time. If the St. Cloud district moves to complete distance learning, they will not provide any transportation for prep students. Because we do not get to control these changes, we really encourage families to make alternate transportation plans um, as you look at the year. Schoology groups have been created for you um, in case you're interested in carpooling or connecting with other families that um, may live near you. Just log on to your Schoology account. You should be able to connect with others. If you have any trouble with that, please just email me and let me know. So each morning um, before even arriving on campus, we're going to ask each student to complete a symptom checker through an app that we will have on their iPad. Um, we're working to have this app installed on student iPads before Welcome Day on August 24th. So you'll get to see what that looks like. As students, students, as you arrive on campus, we're asking that you put your face mask on before you even leave your car. Um, you probably noticed on the supply list, we mentioned that you should probably bring a few face masks. Um, because we're requiring face masks all day, you may want to put a fresh one on at some point throughout the day. So we really recommend you have um, two or three face masks with you. Our doors will open to our students at 7.30 a.m. Um, students will not be allowed to enter the building earlier than this um, be, unless they have a prearranged class or a meeting with a teacher and have received that special permission. Really, this is to ensure that we can carefully screen all of our students for symptoms. As students enter the building, they'll be greeted by staff who will scan a QR code individual for each student. By scanning this QR code, we'll be able to see that an individual student has completed the screener and does not have any concerning symptoms. Students will then move through the hallway in kind of one fluid um, direction into the building through the Weber Center. Before school then, our sixth through eighth grade students will move to their first period classroom. 
At that point, they'll be able to settle in for the day and visit with their peers before school starts. Our ninth through 12th graders will also be invited to head to their first period class most of the time. For some upper school students, instead of heading to first period, they may choose to visit with one another in the Weber Center or an empty classroom. Whenever this unstructured time happens for our upper school students, um, there will be a maximum capacity sign outside of each space for those unstructured times. Our purpose in this is really to limit students from gathering in large groups and will allow for distancing while they socialize. Um, one significant change for our upper school students this year is that there's no fishbowl um, for them to gather as a student lounge. The fishbowl has been transformed into our sixth grade classroom for the year. This allows our sixth graders, have, sixth graders to have a much larger space for their day, and our upper, upper school students will gather in small groups in a number of empty classrooms and spaces throughout the building. This year, every prep student will be given a locker. Um, we know that students used to use the fishbowl for their coats in the past. This year, we're asking students to use a locker for these types of items. We are planning to run um, a typical eight period day on most days. Once or twice a month, just like we have in the past, we'll schedule extended periods. Um, and this will look very similar to how it, how it looked last year. Passing time will be five minutes. And we have separated our students into two different passing periods. Sixth through eighth graders will pass at one time, and our ninth through 12th grade students will pass right after them. Um, you may have noticed in our schedules that we have a consistent 20 minute colloquium scheduled mid morning, five days a week. This year we worked really hard to create a consistent daily schedule with plenty of advisory connection time built in. While we do intend to keep that daily colloquium, colloquium time, know that this will look very different than it has in the past. Um, we will not be gathering together in one space as an entire school community. Our students instead will attend advisory on most days. On Mondays, um, we've always had prep talk. We will continue with prep talk, but students will be in their advisory and it'll be virtual to start the year. Tuesdays will be an advisory lesson um, that really focuses on college and career readiness, learning and organizational skills, or social emotional tips and strategies. Wednesdays, students will still be in their advisory, um, but this is more of just a connection time. They may also have another scheduled meeting, a club meeting or a meeting with a teacher at that time. Thursdays, we'll, have, um, we'll still have prayer service. They'll at this point be in advisory and we'll have a virtual prayer service at this point in time. And Friday is another just connection day. Well, they'll, they'll be in advisories. They may have a scheduled meeting with another faculty member or they'll just be in their advisory. While we look forward to the day when we can gather again as a school community in the Weber Center, we know right now that isn't something that we're ready for. Um, but we are working creatively to foster a strong sense of community in other safe ways. As we move throughout our day, lunch. Very important time of day. Lunch will look different this year as well. We divided our school community into two different lunch periods. The sixth through eighth graders will eat lunch first, and our ninth through 12th graders, who are very patient, will eat second. Um, we're encouraging our students to bring a lunch from home as much as possible. For those who don't bring a lunch from home, we will have the snack bar open with packaged grab and go options. Um, a limited number of students will be allowed in the snack bar at a time to um, allow for that distancing. For our upper school students, the reef and section will be open at 50% capacity. Because we don't quite know what, what this will look like, we are again encouraging students to bring a lunch from home this year. We'll have microwaves available for you. Um, our sixth through eighth graders will be eating outside on all the days that are possible to do so with the Minnesota weather. Our upper school students will also be encouraged to eat outside. It may be helpful to bring a picnic blanket or a yoga mat or something to sit on when you're outside. Um, on days where students need to eat indoors, they will be spaced throughout the building. Our sixth graders will eat in their classroom. Our seventh and eighth graders will each be assigned a room to eat. And our upper, upper school students will be allowed to spread throughout the building, again, following those maximum capacity signs that we have posted outside of each room. They'll be invited to eat in the Weber Center and other empty classrooms. Once again, we'll be training our students to follow that maximum capacity during unstructured time signs so that they can still socialize and visit with their friends, but in a safe way. Throughout the day, if your child has study hall, study hall will be in the library. We're calling it the Learning Resource Center. And they'll have study hall with Stacy Shrupp. She has moved down. She will be supervising all of our study halls, and she's our technology coordinator. 
So I know the students are really excited about having her in that role. We all are. If your student has an open during the day, again, they will be able to gather in small groups following those rules of how many students can be in each empty classroom at a time. Individual classrooms and the different departments and disciplines have spent considerable time this summer designing protocols and procedures to keep our school community safe. While each space is a bit different, everyone will be expected to sanitize their hands on the way into the classroom and again on the way back out. When you walk through our building, you will see that the seating is arranged before facing and distance. Um, you may notice that many of our upper school courses are smaller than usual. We did add additional sections this year, which resulted in smaller class sizes. Um, in every classroom, students will have a seating chart. While this may have looked pretty flexible in the past, this year we intend to have a solid seating chart in each classroom. This gives us the important information we may need if contact tracing becomes necessary. Our academic day will end at 310. Students who are not in an after school activity will be required to leave the building by 330 each afternoon. For those who might need a place to go, they may join our after school study program. This will be held over in St. Michael Hall this year. And more information on how you can register for this program will come your way later this week. A great resource to keep in mind as we navigate this new way of being at school is our student services team. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if you're looking for supports with academics, any struggles or challenges with learning needs, social emotional supports, um, therapeutic needs, or even college planning and preparation. We've got a really strong team ready to help serve. Um, so please just email and let us know. Another, um, we, will, we fully expect to have students in school, in person, and e-learning at the same time. Our hope and intention is that we can get some kind of pattern or rhythm to this. So if you know that you are planning to e-learn for a considerable amount of time, we ask that you, you contact me and we arrange that. For our students who are planning to be in person, we also know that there will be times where you cannot attend school. If you wake up with a sore throat, we are asking you to stay home and e-learn for the day or e-learn for the amount of time that you need. In those situations, we're just asking that you call the office just like you have any other year to let us know that your child is home, why they're home, and that they'll be e-learning. That's a rundown of our day, and I'm certain there's going to be questions, but I'll turn it back over to you, John. Yeah, let's take some questions, but before we get to those, let me add three things about um, our building. Uh, the first, uh, well, the bathrooms, drinking fountains, mm -hmm. and air handling systems. Um, the bathrooms will have, will be open and will have capacity limits posted as well. And that is something we will need to educate our students about as well, that um, and essentially how many people can be in a restroom at, at one time. In terms of drinking fountains, the fountains themselves have all been shut off, but the hydration stations at each drinking fountain remain open. And so we are encouraging, and it was included on the supply list, I think, mm -hmm. that we are encouraging students to bring water bottles with their names clearly on them uh, and they can use those hydration stations to do that. In terms of air handling systems, because we've received a number of questions about that, the physical plant and the director actually of physical plant at St. John's University was here this week with his team and they sent us a note indicating that um, they have verified that our buildings meet regulatory requirements for air exchange uh, the ventilation systems have been retrofitted with high particulate uh, filtration media whenever, wherever that was possible. And through the use of uh, building systems as well, they've indicated that they've been adjusted to utilize as much outdoor air as possible and adjusted for longer periods to ensure um, that the building is effectively turning over air. Um, an outside consultant was brought in as well to evaluate the air handling system. So that was an important step. A lot of people have asked us about that and air handling systems. And so we have taken steps. This is not a brand new building. Um, it's an older building, but, um, but our physical plant uh, assures us that this building meets the standards it needs to meet. And that's a good way to start the year. So if you have questions, if you could type them in in the question and answer box, we can take those questions now. And we'll do this for maybe 20 minutes and we'll see where we go. Please know that um, if you don't ask a question this evening, but have one say tomorrow morning or after we close tonight, please don't hesitate to contact either Christine or me or somebody at the school 
and we will get back to you with an answer to your question. We want to make it clear that, um, that we're here to answer questions. We know that this year, um, um, just by, by virtue of the conditions that we're in, generate a lot of questions, and we want to make sure that we take the time to answer all of them. So we've got some rolling in here. Okay. The first one, is there any information available on what will happen in terms of quarantine if a student or teacher tests positive? Will the students in that classroom be required to stay home for a period of time? We are going to work with, um, and this the university is doing the same thing. In the event that we are notified that somebody has tested positive for COVID-19, um, we, will, we, have, we will contact our designated school nurse through District 742 and the Minnesota Department of Health. We will follow instructions provided by the Minnesota Department of Health in terms of contact tracing and quarantine. Anybody who tells us, I mean, if, if you've had close contact with somebody who has COVID-19 and need to isolate, um, that's a part of the plan. We made that clear in the reopening plan. You will need to isolate for the appropriate period of time if you in fact are tested yourself or a student test positive for COVID-19, they must stay home um, in quarantine. Um, we will take our cues on contact tracing from the Minnesota Department of Health. And this is why um, seating charts become so important to us um, because that allows us to trace. Uh, the governor's guidelines are quite clear about tracing people within a six foot radius of people who, um, who have tested positive and have been together for periods of longer than 15 minutes. I have another question. Um, can you please specifically address convocation? <laughs> That's a really good question because we're working on that right now. We are not going to do, I would love to do convocation in the Abbey Church. Convocation is one of the great um, signature celebrations at the prep school. It's like no other school year beginning at any other place. Um, we are planning, there's a committee uh, led by faculty mm -hmm. who are planning convocation right now. We're going to do it outside um, on the soccer field, on the SAG soccer field, uh, where we have plenty of room to keep people a long ways apart, where we will have a stage dais and microphones, and we do plan to do convocation. It will be at the end of the day of the first day and not the beginning. We don't yet have all of the details in place for moving students from the building to the SAG soccer field are still being uh, worked out, but that's our plan for right now. So where we and it will be wonderful. Yes, and where we normally ask students to dress up for convocation, do not dress up this year. Instead, wear something that you're great sitting on, on the grass. And if it's raining or terrible weather, we just will have to delay conv convocation to another time. Um, another question is about lunch, and this is asking if students can choose the people they want to eat with if they are assigned a space to eat. So this will really be biggest for our seventh and eighth graders. Upper school will always have that option. And sixth graders, if they're eating inside, will be eating with all of their sixth grade classmates. And so seventh and eighth grade will be assigned, and our teachers, um, our middle school teachers, or seventh and eighth grade teachers, have been trying to figure out the right system for that, so that, um, so that students can eat with their friends and yet um, be assigned a space. So that is definitely something that they're working through to make sure that um, we know that that lunch is a social time. So making sure that we can allow that. And we expect that lunch is um, one of those parts of the day that we expect is going to evolve over the year, both as students get used to it and um, as we see actually how patterns of where students eat lunch and how patterns of lunch taking mm -hmm. um, unfold. And if there's any more questions right now. We're not on a tape delay. <laughs> We're pulling them up, I promise. We're waiting for questions to arrive. Ah, this is a really good one. If a student is unable to get a ride, will they just join the classes online? And that's, that's, um, that's just going to be a, a reality and a challenge that we're going to have to address. Um, our hope would be that we could connect families with the, those Schoology groups to be able to get students a ride to school. Um, and if they're comfortable and able to be here, we want our students to be here. That being said, we recognize that it is a, re, a tough reality. And so if you're in that position, I would just ask that, um, that you talk with me and we'll, we'll figure something out. But yes, that is a benefit to, having, to offering both in-person and online is that that e-learning option is available 
We just want to make sure that we're communicating so our teachers know what to expect and that you know what to expect at home. And this is one I fully expect will evolve as well. This is one of these that we'll understand more as we live it and experience mm -hmm. it over time. Um, does the fishbowl allow for socially distanced classroom for the whole group of sixth graders? It does. It's quite a large space. And right now we have 23 sixth graders. 20 who will be in that class. Correct. Correct. It's the, besides the science labs, it's probably the largest classroom. It is the largest classroom space we have besides science labs and, and uh, the orchestra room. Um, we've got a question about classroom. Oh, we didn't even talk about this. Will classrooms um, be sanitized after classes? Yes. Um, we're, we, tables will be sprayed, door handles, doorknobs will be sprayed, and then we will be just as a matter of course throughout the day in hallway spaces on banisters um, spraying and cleaning those throughout the day as well. If um, this building will be as clean as it's <laughs> ever been. Um, I think the trick will be um, for students and for parents talking to students, in part will be after lunch, we're really gonna have to ask um, students to, um, this is a, sort of an axiom of camping, a leave no trace, that when lunch is over, instead of um, leaving a mess in a classroom, for example, to clean up so that way we can keep this building as clean as possible. We have a question about music. How will band and choir work this year? So our band, orchestra, and choir, our music department has done a ton of research um, and they have been staying very current with current um, best practice. Um, we will be offering band music, uh, band, choir, and orchestra with very, very um, strict protocols in place. The students will have a very clear procedure for entering the room and exiting the room where they put their instruments together. Um, some of the things they'll of course be sanitizing on the way in, on the way out, their chairs, their stands will be sanitized after they're done. They won't be sharing music. There will be no sharing of instruments. Um, masks will be worn in music all the time unless they need to blow into their horn. And if they're blowing into their instrument, they'll only do so at the direction of their instructor. So in the past where students would go in and start warming up on their trumpet, they won't be doing that. They'll be doing warm-ups together as a group. Um, we also ordered bell sleeves for all of the instruments. And uh, in all of our choir, orchestra, and band, they'll be between six and nine feet apart. Our music department has worked hard to be able to have an alternative if and when we ever need to move to e-learning. Or for our students who are already e-learning, we have purchased a new online curriculum for our music students and we'll continue to do some lessons virtually. And we've been fortunate to be able to, in addition to our faculty working with the university, university yes. music department, um, we've also been fortunate to have the opportunity to work with a couple of other independent schools in the Twin Cities, and uh, our music protocols will be quite similar to theirs. Um, another question, will teachers plan to teach outside more as well? We do have teachers that are planning to teach outside more as well. It really depends on the course and what works well, um, but we've had some teachers who have really been trying to creatively think about how they can do that. Well, and of course, um, that's one of the wonderful things about Minnesota that we can do that for a while. And, um, and I think that we will, uh, for, for, for some, we'll, we will do this as long clearly as we can. So here's a question about um, the university campus and restricted areas. Um, St. John's University um, has restricted some access to the pool and things like that. Are there other um, St. John's, St. St. Ben's facilities that kids will be restricted from? Library, campus bus, other campus in general. Um, we mentioned Sexton, so we just want to be clear on all the restrictions. There are no, I'm not, well, there are no restrictions, for example, in the library. There are no restrictions that we've been told, at least, on the intercampus bus, the link bus that runs between campus. The places where our students cannot go would be um, places principally related to the, the palestra and, and the gym and fitness facilities, which will not be available to our students, at least this fall. Otherwise, we, um, our students would have 
the, the same access that university students have to university facilities. We have a question about snow days. <laughs> will snow days be distance learning or will we just have no school? And that is a really good question um, and one that will kind of wait and wait and see how things go here. We did prove that we can do e-learning um, fairly well. So I think the years of having eight to 10 snow days is probably done that we'll be able to put in some of those e-learning days, but whether or not we have one just plain snow day, we'll wait and see. Got more questions here. Will we get notified if there's a positive case in the school or not? Or will we only get notified if their student is exposed within six feet of a positive case? We're gonna take our cues from that on the Minnesota Department of Health. The guidance on that isn't clear. For example, there's not necessarily, if it's, if it's contained in a, in a singular place, um, it, we're required, for example, to notify people um, already on, for example, pertussis um, or measles um, for people who are close. Uh, I imagine the protocol will be the same. But this is an opportunity to say this. Um, and how our students use social media. It is very likely that students will know um, quite a bit about what happens in terms of positive cases. And we really encourage parents, please talk to your students about appropriate and inappropriate uses of social media when it comes to reporting other people's health issues or even their own or somebody in their family. It compromises health privacy laws that, for example, we are subject to. We are not um, allowed to simply name individuals who tested positive or, or, or frankly who are sick perhaps with other disease, diseases as well. We're not, we're not allowed to do that. And um, we know that that information is frequently shared as kind of casual social information. And we really encourage you to talk to your students about why it's important that you not just wantonly share that kind of information. It violates either your privacy or somebody else's privacy in ways that uh, you may not want or certainly they may not want. Um, will parents or visitors be allowed in the school and what would that look like? So we're really trying to protect the, our environment in here. And so we're discouraging um, a lot of visitors this year um, or things like, you know, your child forgot something and you want to drop it off. Um, this year we're asking that you not do that and that we try to figure it out here at school. We won't be asking for parent volunteers in the same way that we have before. That being said, if you need to come in for something, um, just, make an, just make an appointment ahead of time. Let us know what you need and, and what you need to come in for and we will screen you just as we're screening everyone else as they enter our doors. Um, how is online being integrated with in-person learning? This spring, everyone was online, so that will be different for those that choose online. It will. It's going to um, it's going to be a challenge for us, and one that our teachers have been considering and thinking through this summer of how strategies that we can use to engage our e-learners when we have in-person learners in front of us. So it's going to be a growth opportunity for us for sure, but one that we're we're ready to try and tackle. Our faculty have been working on this all summer, and I'm really immensely proud of the amount of time and effort they've put into this working together and seeking best practices. This is a different, clearly a different practice than has, uh, has typically been the case at PrEP. Um, we're essentially following a model that universities all over the country, including St. Ben's and St. John's are using. Um, and uh, as it was in the spring, um, which I would call it adaptive throughout the spring, as we learned more about what worked well and what didn't, we adapted the practice, and I expect that that will happen throughout this fall and this academic year as well as we learn more. The goal here is to ensure that all students, whether they are physically present in the classroom or not, receive the same strong prep education. Um, are there any ideas for yearly activities such as talent show, homecoming, mm -hmm. coffee house? <laughs> Yes, there are ideas. Um, our student council actually has been working quite hard, quite hard um, to brainstorm ideas and alternate ways to do things. Um, we don't have any specifics to share right now, but they've been working on it. 
And I think just so you know, we're both, we're parents too. And we get these questions at home from our own children about what's going to happen. Um, I think our, our student council is a, a, a really strong student council, very ably advised by Herr Beck. Um, and they're working hard on those kinds of activities. But this is going to be the kind, the kind of year where we mostly take it as it comes and take what's available mm -hmm. for us to do. And we'll have to make those decisions. We know in advance, but, um, but we're going to do everything we can to provide activities, but they have to be done within um, the guidelines of our uh, health and safety protocols. Yes. If local infection rates continue to rise and parents decide it's too risky for their student to attend in person, can we move to distance learning at any time on an individual basis and then back if the situation improves? Yes. Yes. If for whatever COVID-related reason you decide that your child needs to switch over to e-learning, we can do that same day um, and then they can switch right back in. What I would ask then is just really good communication with the office of um, when you're moving to e-learning and for about how long that you how long you think it might be and then we'll just keep in communication before your student returns we are prepared for that um, are students able to combine in-person and virtual learning regularly much like a hybrid structure for district 742 even if they are not unwell that's not our preference um, that's that's not our preference um, we, we, we have structured the e-learning option for students and families for whom being at school was either not possible, which has proven to be the case for some of our students, especially those coming from other countries, um, for people who are um, ill or, or need to be you know, quarantined or isolated. Um, we, for purposes of keeping um, something of a normal day, it is our preference that students not decide that Thursdays and Fridays are days they prefer not to be um, at school live. Are students able to go to after school study on occasion and with short notice if it helps a family with end of day pickup issues that might arise? We do ask that you register your child um, simply because it helps us with numbers. And if it's too full, um, you know, we just want to make sure that we have the right numbers. So it, it you could let us know um, on relatively short notice, but I wouldn't do it the day of, you know, just if you can help us prepare and make sure that we have space and everybody's able to distance, that would really help us out on our end. And while the space in St. Michael Hall is actually quite large, we do need to be attentive during the after school study period to social distancing guidelines there as well. So it's not, it's not certainly not unlimited capacity. And this is related, will the activity bus be a sure thing every day? <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. um, it's because we have after school study, um, we will have an activity bus. Yes, we are prepared for that. Have you identified a threshold number of confirmed COVID cases for students that would switch prep to all distance learning? A mm -hmm. threshold number of cases in the St. Cloud community? Um, well, no, not in the St. Cloud community. Um, we're, partly because we're located at, on campus at Johns, even though I know another, the, the largest single number of our students come from St. Cloud. Um, the guidance from the governor for public schools, because this question, we've been asked this question a number of times, and it's, it often comes in the form of, is it one student, is it two students, is it three students? The guidance that the governor provided suggests that somewhere between two and a half percent and five percent of a student of, of the student population testing positive where they also cannot identify a source um, would likely result in, a, in, a, in guidance from the Department of Health to uh, close the school to in-person instruction. I think that that's still yet to play out and how the Department of Health actually does that. But again, we keep going back to the guidance from the Department of Health because in fact, that's who we work with um, in a normal year on infectious diseases, and that's where we'll take our cues. And related to that, this was a question, if we switch to remote learning for the entire school, school community, how much lead time will we have? And that's just really tough to answer without knowing the situation. It may not be much lead time at all, right? If, the, if we consult with the Department of Health and they're saying that we need to close for a few weeks, 
it would be immediate. So um, our teachers will be working with students who are here in person for what that will look like if and when so that they have the materials they need when they're leaving to be able to switch over very quickly to e-learning. It clearly is not our preference to get into a uh, right, copy right. back and forth, but we learned in the spring that um, our preference and conditions may not always align. And so we will do this in as, if we have to, in as orderly a way as we can. The next question is, do we expect to have adequate sports buses? <laughs> We're hoping that we can just have adequate sports seasons first. Mm -hmm. Practice began today for all sports. Um, as for any parents involved in sports, you know that there are four fall sports that we offer that are, in fact, have been allowed by the Minnesota State High School League. Um, soccer, swimming, tennis, and cross country. Um, each will feature a shortened season. And um, Mr. Bathis is working on how to transport students to and from contests and what that means to be on a bus uh, to contests. Uh, to and from contests, and whether it's just varsity, um, whether it includes junior varsity or not, and um, we're not even sure about a middle school schedule, and that of course depends on the schools that we play and whether they, whether they do the same thing. So this isn't just a decision on athletics about what happens at prep, it's, um, it's highly dependent as well on the choices that other schools make. And we're following all of those safety um, protocols and guidelines put out by the Minnesota State High School League. But as far as providing buses, we provide buses in a normal year to, to and from athletic contests, and we would do the same uh, this year as well. Um, are upper school, school students allowed to choose between e-learning or in class each day or set some sort of schedule? So it goes back to our previous question. We are asking, we are, um, we are asking that they do not do that. <laughs> Um, that they are either in person or e-learning. And if they need to switch over to e-learning for whatever COVID related reason that is, then we need, just like every other absence, we need parents to call that in and let us know. But again, to John's point, um, to keep the classroom as stable as possible, we're not looking for students to choose an every other day model or something like that. Will students still be able to sit and use the eagle's nest? <laughs> yes. It will be there, but again, a sign will be posted for how many students can be in that space at one time. We'll set the furniture and students won't be able to move the furniture. So as long as you're good with however we set that furniture, you can definitely use that space. Will spectators be allowed at fall sporting events? Um, we're still working on that. Um, the answer is likely to be yes. However, we will have to have the exact same social distancing, physical distancing um, protocols for fall sporting events. It's a lot easier for outdoor sports than it is for indoor sports. Um, we're still trying to figure out yet how, for example, how swimming will work and mm -hmm. where we will swim. Um, but um, for, for example, soccer, which obviously takes place in a very large field, um, we'll just simply have to regulate how closely, pe how close people can be in sort of the pods that they sit in. Is repeat. So let's see. Under what conditions would you make a decision to close in-person learning? Are there determined triggers? Well, I, I mean, that goes back to, I mean, this is a similar question to the ones that we've already gotten. Um, if, if in fact the Minnesota Department of Health tells us that either, um, that, that the school is, needs to be closed, we're going to take that guidance. Um, and clearly short of that, we could, we could make our own judgment, but I think it's important that we as leaders of the school take our cues first from the Minnesota Department of Health and that's what we intend to do. There aren't, I don't have, we don't have a fixed number and I at this point don't believe any school in the state would be able to say a fixed, it's this fixed threshold or not, short of some kind of guidance from a public health professional. Um, will field trips take place this fall? 
we won't be going, we won't be leaving campus for field trips um, this, for this fall for the first semester. Uh, we may take some on campus walks and field trips like that, but we won't be leaving campus. Similarly, we don't plan on, on traveling during the interim as well. Um, at this point, because those trips have to be planned long in advance, that um, as much as we really, and families and students really enjoy the trips we plan um, in interim or in both spring break, um, those this year are all delayed. A uh, question about our residential students. Will dorm staff do health screenings prior to kids going to class? And if a child needs to stay home, will they work remotely in the dorm? Yes and yes. So just like all of our other students will be asked, all students will be asked to do the screener every single morning before coming in our doors. Um, and if any of our residential students need to stay home for whatever COVID related reason, they can um, attend via e-learning. Or even not, I mean, if they're just ill. Yep. Yeah. I think we may have gotten, okay. there's more coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, older brother, um, an older sibling who drives and brings in a younger sibling, um, and he has some early mornings. Can the younger brother check in then also? I would ask if that's the case that you call me and we work something out. Um, there will be very few students that will be entering the building early this year. We have three zero hour, what we call them classes, and that would be chamber choir, jazz band, and photo journalism. So if they're in one of those three classes, give me a call and we can figure something out. But otherwise, we probably won't have anything happening before 7.30 for students. Will there be swimming in the lake for the sixth graders in the chapel walk? <laughs> we don't know if we'll be able to use the beach yet. It's not point. open. It's the beach not is open. still fenced off. And the chapel walk is, the chapel walk is open. And yes. people, in fact, every day walk out to the chapel. And again, um, that's something I expect is very likely to happen. This next one is a good question. Um, how many of our international students will be able to return to campus? Students are wondering if their friends will be here in person or only online. At this point, the majority of our international students are still at home in their countries um, and plan to be e-learning uh, for a variety of reasons. Some um, related to just sort of the COVID situation in the United States some related to the difficulty of traveling and being able to get here on time. Um, most, nearly all of them have indicated that at some point in the year, if it's possible and safe, that they would like to return to campus. But at this point, um, the majority of our international students are in their home, in their home countries this fall, starting this fall. If a student misses school for symptoms that are among the list of COVID-related symptom, symptoms, will you require COVID testing before the student can return to school? No. Um, we've, indicated, we've included a link in Prep Forward about what you're to do if that happens. I mean, to get, we're not required, we're requiring that you follow the protocol set in um, Minnesota Safe, what's it called? Um, Minnesota Safe or Safe MN. Um, and those are pretty, so go into Prep Forward and find that link, and it will tell you how um, you, and it involves time and being symptom-free coming back. Questions? Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, a lot of really good questions. I'm certain that you will have more, um, and that's fine. And it's important that you have the opportunity to ask them. So please don't hesitate to contact us or call us if you have questions. Um, we are really, really grateful for all the support and encouragement of the prep community that, um, that you provided to the school this spring, over this summer, as we enter the fall. And to return to the theme of hope, we are hopeful uh, for a terrific school year. Um, we are not approaching the school year as something just as a as a technical or logistical exercise of just delivering education. Um, we know how important school is both, not just in terms of what students and how students learn, but how important it is to social development as well. 
and, and for providing um, other developmental opportunities for our students. And we intend to provide within the context that we face, the challenges that we face, the very best experience that we can for prep students and for prep families. Um, I said to our seniors last fall, um, I'm going to say it at convocation in, in, in a week, that um, we have two choices at this point. We can let this moment and these challenges define us, or we can define this moment and these challenges for ourselves. And it is far better to choose the latter, and that's exactly what we intend to do. So um, we will continuously communicate. We will continuously adapt throughout the year. We encourage you to share with us your observations, your concerns. Frankly, if you have suggestions for improvements, um, that would be wonderful as well. But we do look forward to um, um, hearing from you. And mostly we look forward to seeing our students again. It's been a long time since we've been together. And we very much look forward to opening the school next week. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.